what you just saw in the intro is what we're going to be going into this video. It's the notion of having complementary filters and then just letting one side win out. Why would you want to do this? Like, why not just add a band and, and do exactly what you want from the beginning? I find that just it's a better workflow sometimes for some sounds. You, you'll come across decisions. The controls are right there for you to mess with. And later on, if you want to come up with a better way to get the same curve, you can. But creatively, I really like working at it this way. The entire notion is that we have a sound that we really want to push in one direction or the other. Whether or not we want to keep it there for very long is up to you. you. If you want to mix it this way, I like to use these things as momentary effects. But I have this bass uh, sound in here, this bass bus. <laughs> And there's a lot of room for things to be pushed in odd directions throughout this. And so I really want to capitalize on some of this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a series of three filters. So here's my three filters. I'm gonna make the middle one rather broad and start out pretty low. This one, I'm gonna, and I'm gonna give all of them the maximum gain boost. And they are going to, and this one will also be a pretty wide filter. Uh, next, I'm going to copy this. Now, when you copy and paste filter bands, it can be really disorienting because they will change color on you. Um, they, it, it selects them different. Like we pasted on the red, but the red's now underneath. So just keep uh, that in mind. But now these two cancel each other. We're going to do the same thing here. Copy this one. Make sure when you do this too, that you click very specifically on this. If you right click off, it doesn't put it in the right spot. You gotta right click on this. Paste, give it inverted. Oh, it pasted over there. Oh, oh yeah, this is the other thing. It will also just select whatever node. I don't know how it picks what to select, but it's really disorienting. So we click over here, drag, there it is. So just so you know, the copy pasting, I think they're still working on it a bit, working out some of these kinks. But we'll paste, click over here, drag down. Okay, so with this, band each filter cancels out the other filter and at this point there's usually not a big noticeable difference between them if you have something that's sensitive to phase you might have uh, a thing like maybe a drum loop coming through here or something maybe one of the filters uh, does a phase shift that affects the transient uh, but it's usually not that much of a problem here are the first three notes here it is bypassed very similar but what we're going to do next almost always has some sort of an audible difference. Uh, the first thing is we're going to take these top filters, let's unbypass the plugin, and we're going to give them downwards compression. So if a sound goes past the threshold, it will then get turned down. And keep in mind, it's turning down from these boosts that we've applied. So this already has um, sort of a resonance effect uh, by virtue of these being boosted. If you go to the spectral mode, it changes character. So it's kind of an interesting deal. And on these, these are all being cut. We're gonna bring these all up. And this usually does uh, dole out a sound pretty good. If we bypass it, quite a bit brighter. You could of course change this based on where you put the filters and things, but in theory, it should come out pretty dang similar, but instead we're already squishing it pretty good. But the whole reason we do this is so we can create the gap. <laughs> so I like to come in here and let's say we go after this first one and give them differences in thresholds or gain if you wanna create an offset. And whichever one is bigger is gonna win out. Now you could in theory, you know, do this with a single filter, but I find watching the sound move in this gap to be pretty easy. There's also a way to do this with just pure thresholds without these boosts. Uh, which would, in theory, be more transparent. But if you do it that way, it's also a total pain trying to click on the correct node. Uh, I'll show you what I mean in a bit later. So I've given them different boosts. Let's say that we want more compression here than expansion. Over here, we want uh, maybe a little more expansion. Actually, let's do a big dip. We'll keep this down and we'll have less expansion up. So the curve here will dip down for the most part. And then we'll brighten up the high end. Then we can apply some makeup game. So this is the first thing I like to do 
Uh, and it's one of the methods I like to try out. Now, there's a lot of additional things we could go from here. Right now, this is just general tone shaping. And essentially, we're just applying compression and expansion wherever it's the most convenient. So let's go ahead and take this up to sort of the the last place you could sort of go with this. And that is you can add differences now between them to favor them in different ways. So say for example here, um, I give this a more narrow cue and now it's gonna be this difference here is gonna be more localized right here and it will be a little bit more resonancy. So maybe I want this one to just be broader than this one and we'll get bigger differences on these overlaps and you can create these strange shapes things that you normally wouldn't do because who does this for mixing no one <laughs> but you might use it for sound design or a momentary interesting effect and on this one maybe we'll leave the mid scoop where it is maybe we'll try and have it overlap a little whoops I want to grab the frequency a little more and you can also add a differences in attack speed now with the Pro-Q4. So I can add a quicker attack on this and maybe a faster release. So this effect will linger longer when it crosses the threshold. And you could also mess with the threshold. Um, I find the auto threshold to really follow the sound quite closely most of the time. And so I like to leave it where it's at. Um, and so this will sound like this. Go after the gain here. Maybe reduce this. Yeah, so we'll restore some of the bass. Maybe a move something like this. Kind of a kind of a cool way, a different way of getting to sort of one of these more squished types of sounds. And then the final icing on the cake for what we want to do is we come in here and there's this big build up to it. And right, this is way too much to have on all the time. We might call this like the color Q4 because I don't intend this to be like interpreted as a mixing move. We'll automate this. We'll have it come on just for these moments. Maybe right here, we'll have it swing on and pop out. And you get the stereo image, the spectrum, everything just becomes, you get a lot of interesting things to move around that with sounds like these, it just works out good. Like bass sounds in particular. Uh, in a drop setting, you could create contrast between maybe the first and the second drop without having to do a bunch of uh, new sounds by just changing up how you squish the sound. Maybe we'll leave this down. And then we'll bring it up here again. But now we have these really cool things. We'll leave them right there. So we'll just look at this this section and this section and just do a before and after. And again, you need to gain match this. If you don't gain match it, obviously it's not gonna sound good. You'll have a gain mismatch. But uh, yeah, make sure the game matching is important. When you're new, um, I think you people underestimate how important it is to get this to match and you wanna use the manual one. Don't use the uh, use your ears and match it yourself. Um, you may find you even want this one boosted a little more or a little less based on the frequency content. So let's go ahead and bypass this for the moment. And this is what it sounded like before. And then over here. And this is what it sounds like after. It is uh, kind of amazing how it's just that extra little bit of polish. It's extremely musical, uh, but this is a wild looking EQ. Like no one would normally think to do something like this. You can, again, at the end of it, you might be thinking I could recreate this with one band. I invite you to go ahead and try and make something that behaves like this with one band. It's from a workflow perspective, 
I find this to be like just the most transparent and it's fun to watch the line sort of sit in between all these gaps. When it's all yellow, it's a little more pleasing. I think when you're doing this multi-channel stuff like mid side is what I mean in the case of multi-channel. Um, it, it's a little less because you could see just the one moving. One last upgrade you can do to try and vary up your sound besides just the multi-channel stuff is to also try and make them spectral. So at the moment, every single one of these bands is just dynamic. Any frequency in the band that crosses will affect it equally. Uh, it is very interesting sometimes to make it spectral. Uh, I don't always like doing spectral because sometimes you want those big scoops or that big amount of push and you're going to use another stage after to bring it back up and in those sorts of processing chains you don't want to do this but for this one uh, since we're using a single instance if we change them to spectral it could change quite a bit so here it is currently as it stands listen for how the resonances spike out and also this these big cuts that we've done how they sit <laughs> And now I'm going to go ahead and make them all spectral. And this is what it sounds like. It's like all the, the parts that are interesting got focused on more because those tend to be the things that are louder, the things are ear pickups more naturally. So it's a, it's a very interesting move. Sometimes I'm not a huge fan of turning this on other times i think it's a big upgrade in this particular case i like what it has to bring to the table is this something you've tried with the pro q3 and now with the pro q4 especially with these new spectral capabilities and i'm also really curious if you would add anything different or go at it differently i'm always looking at new ways to mangle sounds that produce cool results um and i'm always game to give it a go so drop down below uh what you think subscribe and hit that bell icon for future videos and have a blessed day Drop